Now, one of the big problems when you're putting kind of formulas and numbers in your paper is how to line things up and how to do punctuation. It gets very confusing. Punctuation is already confusing. This makes it worse. So how do I do the spacing? Well, usually the APA's rule is quite straightforward. And APA says that what you should do is space your formula symbols and letters just like you would in regular English writing. So for example, take a look here. We have the A plus B. So A has a space after it. The plus has a space after it. B has a space after it. C has a space after it. If this was the end of the sentence, then we would have a period right here. A period has no space before and then space after. So it's just like writing English words, only because they're letters, don't be confused because it's just like being a word in a way. What about equations inside of the text? So for example, if you have a short equation, something that's not very long, you can go ahead and put it right inside the sentence of the text. This makes it easy for the reader to go ahead and read. In this example, we have a simple one here. It's not too complicated, not too long. If it gets really long, then you're going to want to separate it into its own equation or formula, which goes into its own line separate, its own paragraph area, which is just like a figure or a table. And it's called an equation or called a formula, depending on your journal, usually formula. So formula one, formula two, formula three. Those will be especially common in research papers that are writing about the mathematics or the statistics or the formulas themselves. So it's a special case in a way. If you have a fraction, you go ahead and use the slanted line, the forward slanted line, but there's no space. So be careful. One slash three, no line, that's one third. One half is one slash two, no space inside of there. Here are two uh, variables, a slash b, and a is a variable by itself, b is a variable, so we go ahead and we put them in italics, that is angled, and then the slash, no space in there. And then again here, we have a slash, and you see no space before, no space after, but then inside the formula, inside the b plus c, because we've already stated this idea up here, B has a space after it, plus has a space after it, and then after the C, no space, we're ending it because the parentheses is just like an English word, right? An English word, you have a parentheses, and then you put your word inside of here, like test, and then you close your parentheses. There's no space here, there's no space here, but there is going to be a space after it over here, and there's going to be a space before it over here. But in this case, because we have a slash, that's a special case, and we're going to say no space there. No space on the slanted line, because it's a fraction. We have lots of brackets and braces, so I think everybody knows how to use these. We have the parentheses, we have the brackets, and we have the braces. And you can see that they go in this order. So the Parentheses must be inside the brackets, and the brackets must be inside the braces. And when you call them a name, you call them left and right. So left parentheses, right parentheses, left bracket, right bracket, and left uh, braces, right braces. Or in programming, they call them curly braces. Okay, and then here's an example. I think we're all very familiar with this kind of formula, right? Where we can very quickly see that the most inside part is down here. And then we have the next level out over here. And then finally, the braces are the biggest level out over here. OK, so for equations in your text, if a number equation is needed, such as this case here, you have a more complicated one or it's important to your research paper, then you go ahead and you include it on a separate line, and it gets a number. So it's going to be like a figure, like a table, only in this case it's going to be a formula or equation number. Then when you're writing your body of your paper, rather than having the formula right there, you say C formula 3, C formula 2. 
So in that case, we could say, here's a good example, applying equation 3. So that means what? That means I'm going to use equation 3, and I'm talking about equation 3, but I don't want to write equation 3 because it takes up too much space or it's too complicated. Do not, however, use an abbreviation like this, EQ3. That's going to be something we see in the next unit, which is tables and figures also. You need to write that out. So it's equation 3. Okay, so that kind of wraps up our equations and numbers and statistics, how to put it in. It's not that hard, it's just following a few rules of thumb and try to stick with those. And when you have a really hard question and you're not sure what to do, what should you do then? Probably you want to go ahead and look at your journal you're targeting or look at your department's thesis examples and see what their guidelines are. And of course, always check with your professor to see what they want. But in general, I think we can say that's uh, not too hard.